Look, I get it more than most that there's a lot that goes on every single day, and we struggle here to cram as much into every possible show, but there are things that are operating generally in the shadows that are incredibly important, not just for what happens day to day while Donald Trump is president, but that will have ramifications long after he's out of office, in the ground or in jail, wherever he ends up. And uh, one of those has to do with his judges. So you might have seen yesterday that Naomi Rao was confirmed by the Senate to a position on the US, uh, the, the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. That is the second highest court in our entire country. They are incredibly important. In some ways, more important than the Supreme Court, at least in the vast majority of areas where cases don't actually make it to the Supreme Court. They stop at the Court of Appeals in a lot of cases. And she is going to be on that, despite very legitimate concerns about her positions like on sexual assault and on abortion rights. So the vote in the end was 53 to 46. You wonder how that broke down? Oh, that was all Republicans supporting her nomination and all Democrats uh, voting against conform confirming Rao. Now, I understand that we're in a, an incredibly, incredibly partisan time. I get that, but it's possible that if you can't get a single Democrat to vote in favor of a judicial nominee, maybe you could find a different judicial nominee, especially considering that she has no experience actually trying cases or anything like that. It seems kind of important. Also important that, like I said, her positions on some of these issues are very suspect. So Elizabeth Warren said uh, after the vote, Mrs. Rao's record shows that she will continue to tilt our courts in favor of the powerful few and leave everyone else behind. And look, I don't want to relitigate her entire record. You can find, you can go back through this if you want to. But so she in college wrote a, a series of editorials, and in one she talked about sexual assault in a case where a woman is drunk. And here's one of the things she said: Unless someone makes her drinks undetectably strong or forces them down her throat, a woman like a man decides when and how much to drink. And if she drinks to the point where she can no longer choose, well, getting to that part point was part of her choice. So look, now she's a judge. It's possible that that was just her in college. I'm sure I believed some crazy things when I was in college. I don't have the power of a judge. I don't have anything like the power of a judge, and I anticipate that I never will. But now she does. And not just a judge who will hear individual cases, a judge who will set precedent for cases outside of her own personal influence, and who will be there again for the rest of her life if she wants to. I'm looking at the picture. I don't know exactly how old, how old she is. She looks pretty young. I feel like she could last there a long time. So, let's say let's let's have a little let's dream. Now let's dream that in two years Bernie Sanders becomes president, and Bernie Sanders works hard to pass progressive legislation, and finally forces not only some Dem from some Republicans to come over, but he corrals the the Democrats, including centrists, to support his agenda. They pass a law, and then for the next couple of years we have to watch every court challenge because the Republicans are gonna be looking for the court that's most likely to strike down one of his laws. And this court is now one judge closer to striking down everything that Bernie Sanders chooses to do. Now, she says that she doesn't believe what she believed before about abortion and about sexual assault. She says uh, every form of it is abhorrent. Responsibility for rape is with the rapist. That's good. I hope that she sticks with that once she has the power. Understand that she was saying that while she was trying to get the position, which is very different than what they will do once they have the position. We've seen that throughout the Trump presidency. But here's the thing, while Naomi Roy Rao is uh, incredibly important because of how radical she is on these issues, she is just one of tons, dozens and dozens and dozens of judges that Donald Trump has been able to get as president. As of today, that's 91 Article III judges nominated by Trump, including two associate justices of the Supreme Court, 36 judges for the US Courts of Appeals. So imagine 36 Naomi's around the country, 53 judges for the United States District Courts, which are also incredibly powerful and incredibly important. Not as powerful as the Courts of Appeals, but still very important. That is what he already has, that's locked in. If Donald Trump was marched, he was like frog marched out of the White House today by Robert Mueller, he would still have those 91 judges. And every day that he stays in power, he is likely to increase that number. Right now, there are currently 62 additional nominations, including six for the Courts of Appeals, 54 for the District Courts, and two for the Court of International Trade, a court that he has thus far not been able to get anyone on. But he's trying. And this is all going on again. These sorts of nomination hearings, they don't even get the, the, the sort of 
Like we have some controversy when he tries to get a new head of the DOJ or you know, if he's gonna have a new secretary of defense, there'll be a lot of debate about that. New head of the CIA, we'll talk about that. But these don't get covered nearly as much even though they are arguably more important because each of their decisions generally also won't be covered nearly as much. They will generally exercise their power without much public scrutiny. And again, they will do so for the rest of their lives. And so please bear in mind, in future cases, when you are considering who to support for president, you should always, always, always think about the effect long term for the rest of yours and my life, the effect on the courts. Donald Trump has not been very effective at pursuing his legislative agenda. He's gotten a few things that he wants, uh, the tax uh, uh, cuts that he wanted, those are gigantic, that's, that's true. But he hasn't been able to get everything he wants legislatively. When it comes to judicial uh, nominations though, he has been incredibly successful and in many ways that's even more important. So bear that in mind. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content, Join now at tyt.com slash join.